All right, today we're going to talk about, as you can see, uh, driving forces and equilibrium potentials, or what I like to call finding E, the happy place. These are some really powerful concepts that will help you understand um, a lot of aspects of the nervous system. Um, I'm going to show you this table a couple times through this uh, presentation. The first time I show it to you, mo most people really don't get too excited about it. It's not really something that's uh, intuitively obvious, and sp but specifically we're going to talk about this E sub-ion. Um, this is actually what this uh, movie is about, what these numbers are and uh, what they mean and why they're important. Um, here we go. This is really a story about driving force and you're going to hear me talk about driving force a lot uh, through our physiology classes and I find that students really don't have a good sense of, of what I mean by that and so I think that if you think about real life um, for a minute it's going to make a, a lot more sense. So we're going to think about a couple of things. In scenario A, your life is almost perfect or really as perfect as you can imagine it to be. So you're living in a wonderful uh, house, you have just unbelievably fulfilling, meaningful relationships, uh, you get to take vacations, everything is just larger than life, uh, perfect, and you, you really couldn't be happier. Um, you know, whatever this is for you, just sort of imagine that. Now, of course, there's going to be something in your life that's not perfect, but it'll be a small thing. It could be like, you know, uh, your Uncle Joe who, who comes in and just kind of creates some havoc. But really, it's not a serious thing, and it doesn't really depress you or, like, reduce the quality of your life in any significant way. So if we could graph your life, of course, in science we graph everything. This line up here, up here represents perfection. So this could be, this is nirvana, okay? And I think we all recognize that it's not truly attainable, but that's what we strive for. And in scenario A, this is where you are. So everything is almost perfect, right? You've got your Uncle Joe, or maybe, I don't know, you got to weed the front yard. But basically, you really are happy with the way things are. And so we would describe a driving force for change in your life to be relatively small. So this is the idea that's important. The comparison of where you are to where you want to be is relatively small. In this kind of scenario, you're probably not going to do anything outrageous like quit your job and move to another city and file for divorce and you know do all kinds of outrageous things because you're really very close to this nirvana. Okay, so your driving force for change is very small. Let's take scenario B, where life sucks. Okay, and uh, you know maybe it's because you're having an emotional meltdown, or maybe you're just you know kind of in that mode where everything is falling apart. Okay, hopefully you haven't been there, um, but life can get pretty bad. And so we're going to put you on the graph here with scenario B, way down here, right? And the idea is that when you're way down here in scenario B, your driving force for change is huge because you are miserable. So when you're way down here, it's very likely you're going to do something outrageous like move or quit your job or file for divorce or, you know, do something dramatic because you really can't stand to be where you are. You'll do anything to get out of where you are. That's the idea. So the driving force is a comparison of where you are to where you want to be. It's how much effort are you willing to put in to make change. That's what this is really about. So when we talk about ions, we're going to talk about sodium and potassium specifically. Let's see how this works. So we're going to go back to this uh, table again, and we're going to try and figure out what these numbers mean. Let's go on the graph. Now our graph, as you notice, has a y-axis. This is membrane voltage in millivolts. And what we're looking at here is where the membrane is. We're working with a cell um, at rest. That's about inside negative minus 70 millivolts. Why it's minus 70, that's a topic for another discussion. But this is basically all cells are inside negative. This would be like a typical neuron, okay? But all cells of the body are inside negative. It is not an equilibrium, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Okay, 
The equilibrium potential for potassium is right here. The equilibrium potential is about, or is exactly, minus 90. For potassium, that value is nirvana. That is where potassium wishes the membrane would be. So if you look at the difference between where the membrane is and where potassium wishes it were, that distance is very small. This is the driving force for potassium. Potassium wants the inside of the cell to be more negative than it already is. But the reality is that it's already very close. So potassium, it's kind of like scenario A in our real life analogy. Okay, let's look at sodium for comparison. The equilibrium for sodium is way up here at plus 60. So what you should notice, and of course the membrane is still at minus 70 at rest, and what you notice is the distance, the vertical distance in millivolts on the Y between where the membrane is and where sodium wishes it would be is huge. This is the driving force for sodium, represented by this red arrow. What this means is that if sodium has any chance to make change, it's going to do whatever it can to make the inside of the cell more positive. That means that sodium is going to try and get into the cell any way it can. And its driving force for doing that is huge because the distance between this number and where the membrane is, is very large. So the driving force is a comparison of where the membrane is to where any particular ion wants it to be. This explains why sodium races through the membrane any chance it can, because the gradient between where the membrane is and sodium's equilibrium potential is huge. But in comparison, potassium just kind of leaks out to make the membrane more negative. But since already the membrane is so close to where potassium wants it to be, its driving force just isn't that great. So that's the idea behind equilibrium values and driving force. And we're going to see how, when we look at the action potential, so you'll notice this typical action potential, as the membrane voltage changes, what happens is the membrane changes its distance from the equilibrium values of all the ions involved. So you cannot just say that the driving force for sodium is high, period. It's high when the membrane is at rest here at minus 70, but look what happens at the peak of the action potential. It's all the way up here at plus 30. So what you want to think about is, at the peak of the action potential, how are the driving forces for sodium and potassium different than they were down here? And does that explain the movement of the ions and the speed at which they travel? More later.